Medium.com is a popular blogging platform that attracts more than 100 million monthly readers. Medium is a perfect place to start your career as a blogger. That's exactly what I did when I started. On Medium, you have a huge built-in audience and a great community behind you right off the bat. In this guide, I will teach you absolutely everything you need to know to start writing on Medium. We will start from the basics, that is how to write a blog post on Medium, and we will go all the way up to understanding the different audience types and strategies to maximize your reach to those. After watching this video, you will know how to use Medium's features, use tools to make your writing look professional, reach the different audience layers of Medium, write stories that get tons of views, and optimize your content for Google and other search engines. But without wasting any more of your time, let's jump into it. One of the things that I love about Medium is that it's free. All you need to do is sign up and start writing. On Medium, a blog post is called a story. To start your first story on Medium, just click write on the top right corner. And once you have completed writing, just hit publish and you're good to go. It is this easy to get your first story into Medium. But there's an ocean of things related to writing on Medium that you need to understand before hitting that publish button for the first time. Now let's get started by talking about how to actually make your blog posts or stories look good. First, you're going to learn how to use Medium's built-in features and tools to make your blog posts look nice. Let's start with the titles and subtitles. To begin a blog post on Medium, add the title as the first line of the story. So basically just type in something, then highlight it and click on that big T button on the center of the box that appears. After adding the title, you can also add a subtitle. And by the way, this is a really common thing to do. So I recommend doing it right off the bat. So after the title, just hit enter and then type in something again, then highlight that part once again, and then click on that smaller T that appears on the model. Now that you have your title and subtitle in place, let's continue moving on with the actual text part of your blog post. So whenever you type in something on Medium and highlight it or click on it, there's a small black model that appears that has some options. As you already saw, two of these are for the title and subtitle. Now the three options on the left hand side are bolding, italics and a link. To use these options, just highlight a section of your text and then click one of these options. For example, here I'm showing you how to bold a simple piece of text. Next, let's try something very similar. So instead of just highlighting a single word or character, let's highlight the entire paragraph. If you do this, there are even more options to consider now. Now, in addition to the title and subtitle options, you also have two other options called quote and drop cap. So the quote option is to format those quotes that you might add to one of your stories. This makes the quotations stand out much better. Then the drop cap option is something that I personally never use, but I see it being used sometimes. So basically it just makes the first character of the paragraph look larger. And by the way, that chat bubble right there is the private message option. These are notes you can leave to your story or these are notes that other editors can leave to your stories and these are not visible to the people that are reading your posts when they are live. So these are the very basic options you have on Medium to highlight or format your blog posts. But one thing you might see missing right now is those bulleted lists and numbered lists. So let's consider adding those. On Medium, this is super simple. Just type in dash and hit space and you will start a bulleted list. Similarly, if you want to add a numbered list to your story, you can just type in a number one followed by dot and then hit space. This starts a numbered list. Also, one thing you might find really useful is that you can also add those code blocks on Medium. So basically, medium.com has a ton of software developer and tech writers that are using code snippets in their blog posts. And it's really important to make those code snippets look nice because the developers that are reading the posts really hate it when the code is not formatted. And these days, Medium has a built-in code editor. So when you start a new line in your blog post, just click on that plus icon 
and click on those curly braces. This starts a new code block. And once you see the code block, you can just quickly scroll down the drop-down menu to select the coding language that you want to use in this particular code block. And now we're all good with the basics. So now you can format your text, add some bulleted lists and numbered lists, as well as some code blocks. Next, let's consider adding some other types of content to your blog post to make them even more enjoyable to read. So, as you already saw in the code block example, there's this plus icon that appears on the left hand side of the blog post editor on Medium. This opens up a toolbar with a bunch of content options. Now, let's go through these one by one. Let's start by considering how to add images on Medium Stories. There are actually three ways you can add images to your Medium post. The first option is to click that camera icon that pops up when you click the plus button. Then you can just drag and drop an image from your computer to the editor. Another option that's perhaps even more common is by using that search button to search for free high quality stock images on Unsplash. You can use these images for free on your Medium Stories, which is really cool and I have used this a lot. Once your image has loaded, you can click on it to see some resizing options if necessary. However, most of the time, it is a great idea to just keep it as it is. Next up, let's consider using videos on a Medium Story. Unfortunately, you cannot upload a video directly to Medium. You need to embed it from another resource. Basically, there are two ways to add a video to a Medium post. One of the most common ways I use is that I just convert my video into a short GIF file and then upload that GIF file to Medium. There are many great GIF converters online, so that takes only a couple of seconds to do. But if you really want to have a full-on video appear on the Medium story, you need to upload it to a third-party platform and then embed the video to the blog post on Medium. Once you have uploaded your video to, let's say, YouTube, you can copy a link to it on YouTube and then come back to your Medium story, click on that plus icon and then click on that play button. Once you have clicked the play button, you can just copy paste your link to that external video and Medium will render a nice preview of the video to the post. And speaking of embedding content to your Medium story, if you want to recommend a further reading to your audience, you can use a traditional link and just link to another blog post. But one thing that's really cool about Medium is that if you copy a link and paste it to your Medium story and hit enter, it will render a really nice preview of that link in 5 to 10 seconds. I really recommend doing this sometimes because this makes the blog post look much nicer. Now one of the things that I recommend checking out are those medium shortcuts. So if you become a power user of this medium blog post editor, you might want to implement some workflows that actually speed up your writing process. Now what would be a better way to do this than checking out those keyboard shortcuts that medium offers? To view these options, just click on the three dots on the top right corner and check hints and keyboard shortcuts. This opens up all the shortcuts that are available to you. Make sure to scroll this model left to see even more options. Now you know how to leverage your Medium stories by using the built-in features and content options on Medium. Next, let's take a look at some content creation tools that you can use to speed up your writing even further and make your writing stand out even more. So unless you're an experienced writer, you're going to make a ton of mistakes. These include typos, improper punctuations, clumsy sentences, using too much passive voice and such. This is where the external AI-powered tools might help you. First of all, let's introduce Grammarly. Grammarly is the tool that I use every day to write the blog posts on Medium and other websites. And by the way, the free option is more than enough. I'm actually using the free option right now, so I would highly recommend activating that for you as well. You can find a link to it in the description. Now another cool free tool you can use to improve your writing is the Hemingway app. Just copy paste your blog post content to this app and see all the errors and warnings that appear. Also, remember to take this with a bit of a grain of salt because not all of these errors are something you should actually fix. 
One of the things that I recommend checking is the usage of passive voice. So you definitely don't want to use too much passive voice in your blog posts. Just use Hemingway to fix these passive voice issues and you will be good to go. Of course, you can also react to those other warnings and recommendations that the Hemingway app suggests. But this is also not an ideal use of it because if you react on everything that Hemingway suggests, you will strip out your personality and your own writing style and make the content look very generic. So use common sense when using these kinds of editors. Now the third tool you might want to use when writing blog posts on Medium is the ChatGPT, which you have probably heard of before. Now I'm not saying that you should write a blog post from start to finish with ChatGPT. As a matter of fact, I made a separate video about that and why that is a really, really, really bad idea. But you can use ChatGPT to rephrase parts of your blog post to make them more understandable and, for example, to add emojis to your blog post sections or even coming up with some basic blog post ideas. But just be careful when using ChatGPT. It is just a mathematical function that produces text. It doesn't think, it doesn't really create, it doesn't roam around the world and experience things the way we do. So you need to be the author of your content and you need to be the one that pours the thoughts, ideas, experiences and your knowledge into the mix. Otherwise, you won't really find success on Medium. Now let's move on to the audience types of Medium.com. So basically, there are four types of audiences on Medium that you can reach. And I'm starting from the smallest audience to the biggest audience. So the smallest audience you can reach on Medium is the self-publishing audience. So basically, once you hit that publish button on Medium for the first time, you're publishing the blog post to your followers only. The more followers you have, the more eye pairs you might attract with your brand new story. But if you're just getting started, you probably have zero followers. So the self-publishing audience is definitely not that big. Of course, you can also use tags when self-publishing content so that your blog posts will appear on those topic pages related to those tags. Next up, we have publications. A Medium publication is basically a smaller sub-medium on Medium where you can publish a blog post to a group of people that are actually interested in a common topic or niche. For instance, there's a programming publication that is called Better Programming that has hundreds of thousands of followers and they are all interested in programming. When compared to self-publishing, you can skyrocket your blog post's reach by publishing it on a relevant publication. For example, I have used this strategy all day. I have published most of my stories on relevant publications and I just calculated that the reach is 10 times bigger than by self-publishing the post. Of course, this number might vary based on your niche and your story types, but this is how it has went for me. So I have always published my most successful stories on publications. And by the way, if you don't know how to add the post to publications or how to apply to those publications, I will talk more about that later in this video. The third layer of audience on Medium is called Medium Distribution. Basically, Medium Distribution means that your blog post is such an excellent piece of content that Medium takes it and starts to push it out to even further audiences not restricted by self-publishing or publications audience. If your blog post gets distributed, there is a chance that it gets hundreds or even thousands of visitors in a short amount of time. But this is by no means a guarantee. I have had my stories went distributed and still get like 100 or 50 visitors or something like that. Now, last but not least, let's consider the fourth audience type of medium that is search engines. So basically, this is the entire world. The first three audience types that I just mentioned are always restricted to medium.com only. But the search engine traffic is where it gets to a completely different level. You may have noticed that if you Google up something, especially if that something is tech related, you might see a ton of Medium posts appear high on the search results. This is because Medium is a trusted website 
and Google and other search engines rank Medium stories high on search results if they deem those posts really useful. And basically what this means is that anybody in the world that just uses Google or other search engines might find your blog post. This has happened to me a bunch of times. I think one of my stories has more than 10,000 external visitors from search engines like Google. Now there's a problem with the search engine audience and that's related to monetization because on Medium you can't really make money on search engine traffic unless you're doing affiliate marketing. But once again, we're going to talk about that more later down the line in this video. Now that you understand the audience structure of Medium, it is time to consider how to reach those audience layers and more specifically, how to use strategies to maximize your reach and get as much visitors as possible. So as I mentioned before, the smallest audience type is your followers. To publish a blog post to your followers, just write a post and hit that publish button. Also, you can specify some tags that best describe your blog post to get some initial traction even without a single follower. However, if you publish stories to only your followers as a beginner, you will probably end up having less than 10 reads per story. I have used tags all the time and I have noticed that they won't really give me any readers to my blog posts. So basically what I'm trying to say here is that if you want to see significant results, you need to publish your blog posts on publications. Self-publishing just won't cut it. So next up, let's consider how to write a blog post on a publication. To add a blog post to a publication, click on the three dots on the top right corner and select add to publication. However, if you are a beginner writer and you haven't applied to any publications, you probably won't see any publications in the list. To publish a story in a publication, you need to be accepted in one. Unfortunately, this can cause a ton of confusion because every publication has their own set of rules based on which you can apply. Also, there are inactive publications, there are publications that are not accepting new writers, and then there are those super strict publications that will only accept a couple of writers per thousand applicants. So the best way to get accepted into a publication is to find a relevant publication that actually accepts new writers, visit the publication's homepage, search for a write for us or a similar page on that front page. Oftentimes you will need to fill in an application form or even send your blog post draft via email to one of the editors of the publication. Once you have done this, the publication authors then review the story. This can easily take hours or even days. I have had to wait for up to a week. And once they have reviewed your story, they will accept or reject. Notice that not all stories get accepted into publications. Even I can get rejected from time to time. Now, if you have produced an absolute masterpiece and your publication accepts your post, they will add you as a writer and publish your story with minor edits. And now what's really cool about this is that once the publication adds you as a writer, you don't need to send those application forms to that publication anymore. Instead, you can click on those three dots on the top right corner and click add to publication. Now that you understand publications on Medium, let's consider the further distribution option. Basically, if your blog post is really good, Medium will push it to even broader audiences. But this does not happen to every blog post. And there's pretty much no guaranteed way for you to actually ensure that your blog post gets distributed. All you need to do is write a ton of quality content that Medium loves and the audience loves to maximize your chances for getting distribution. The content must be original, well-written, and solve a problem and be entertaining at the same time. Now you should have a basic understanding of the audience layers and how to maximize your reach on medium.com by publishing blog posts on publications. Now, as I mentioned, search engine traffic is a huge part of Medium and it's actually the broadest audience type you can ever reach. But because search engine optimization is such a big thing, I will leave it to the end of this video in case you're interested. So now let's move on to consider strategies you can use to maximize your reach on Medium. For me, it took more than 70 blog posts and two months of full-time work before one of my blog posts went viral. I recommend publishing a blog post every day. Frequent writing, 
teaches you how to become a better writer and it will build your audience quicker. The next tip is to publish on publications. Now, as I mentioned in the audience section, self-publishing a blog post is not a great idea, especially if you're getting started because you have no followers and you will probably end up with no visitors at all. Now, as I stated earlier, the publications give you a really nice chance for building that audience quicker. So because these publications have tons of people that are interested in a common topic, if your blog post is good, you might get tons of reads to your post, even with zero followers, thanks to all those publication followers. So that's definitely something you should always do. And as a matter of fact, I think I published more than 150 blog posts on Medium before I self-published my first story. So I always use publications to get maximum reach. The next tip is not to pick a niche. So on Medium, there are different audience types and publications and categories that you can write for. And this means that you should definitely not choose one particular niche. Remember, Medium is a platform and the readers on Medium don't really care about the authors that much. That's the harsh truth about the platform. So people remember that they read this amazing story, but they won't really remember who was the author. Even if you had, let's say, 10,000 followers, nobody would actually care if you published a blog post about cats today and rocket science tomorrow. So make sure to cover every single niche that just interests you or that is performing really well to maximize your potential. For example, when I started on Medium, I started writing about Swift programming language and I wrote those lengthy tutorials on how to do cool animations and stuff but that wasn't working at all. So then I just started to publishing Python programming tips and those were doing really, really well for me. And during my time on Medium, I have published blog posts about programming, technology, blogging, SEO and such. So definitely don't restrict yourself to a particular niche. The next tip is using tags. So what are the five words that best describe your blog post? Well, before you publish the blog post, Make sure to add five tags to it. People are following those tags and they might find your story through one of those tags categories, even if you have no followers. To add tags to your blog post on Medium, just hit that publish button. This will render a preview of the blog post where you have an option to lay down five tags that best describe your content. Now, there are some lists about popular tags on Medium, but I really, really don't recommend reading those because it is not about the popularity of the tag. It is all about the relevancy of it. So if there's a blog post that talks about rocket science and you notice that cats is a popular tag on Medium, you should not use that tag because it has nothing to do with rocket science. So please, please, please use those tags wisely and choose them as the five words that best describe your content. Now, the next step is promoting your blog posts on social media. So this is definitely not a must and I have actually pretty much never done it, but I have noticed that the publications where I have published my blog posts have actually promoted my stories on social media platforms and those have resulted in a couple of hundred extra readers per month. So that's really cool and that's definitely something you can consider. Now this is especially useful if you already have a ton of followers on social media that are interested in those topics that are, you are writing about. But remember, in the end it's all about the quality of the content. If your content is really good, people will share it, people will talk about it and ask others to read it as well. At the end of the day, it is super important to only focus to make your blog posts stand out and be really, really useful and insightful reads. Now, the next step is using a structured layout that reads nicely. Of course, this might vary based on what you're writing about and how long your blog post actually is. And even more importantly, if you're publishing your blog post on a publication, they might give you a specific set of rules that you need to follow in order to have any chances for your blog post to get published. Nonetheless, here's a really simple structure that I use to write 
basically all of my blog posts on Medium. So basically your blog post should start with a really strong and eye-capturing title. Then you should follow it up with a strong subtitle as well. Then you need to add a compelling image to the blog post right before the first chapter starts. Then follow that up by a really short and concise introduction that basically sells the blog post to your reader. And when you write, keep those sections short. This is because people read blog posts on mobile devices and everybody hates those walls of text. Remember to structure your blog post to headings and subheadings to make it more skimmable for those that are in a hurry. You can use bulleted lists, numbered lists, add bolding and italics and add some links to the blog post. But just don't decorate it too much. And especially if you have written a longer blog post, remember to conclude it with a short conclusion section. Also, one thing that I love to do is add those further reading links to the end of the blog post. So if one blog post gets a ton of visitors, people might continue reading other relevant stories of mine. Now, one thing that's really, really important when starting on a platform like medium.com is that you need to improve all the time. Try to make every blog post 5% better than the previous one. And the way to do this is that you need to see what's working right now. Open up other popular stories in your niche. See how they are formatted. How long are those blog posts? What kinds of images, headings, subheadings, or what kinds of stuff do they use to attract visitors? Avoid complicated and long words. Don't try to outsmart your reader. Use simple language that people can easily learn and read. Avoid those filler words like very, just, really, and so on. Develop a clear message. And as I have already mentioned before, it is super important to read other people's stories because this gives you free data of what's performing and what's not. You can search for topics or publications and pick those blog posts that have the most claps or comments and see what they have done to make their story stand out. You can use these same strategies to make your blog posts go viral. For example, at the beginning of 2023, ChatGPT and other AI tools were booming and everybody were writing about those. If you just looked up anywhere on Medium, you could see a ChatGPT or AI related blog post with a ton of claps and comments. And yes, at that time, ChatGPT related blog posts were doing really well. And if you happen to write one about that topic, you would probably find it having a ton of visitors as well. But yeah, so randomly choosing a blog post topic that you want to write about and you really care about is a really bad idea, unfortunately, because it is a really great chance that nobody else is actually interested in that topic. So make sure to explore Medium and make sure to see what's working right now and write about topics that are performing well to begin with. And last but not least, readers' time is valuable. Make every single word count. Eliminate sentences and words that don't add value to your blog post. Now you have the tools and know the strategies on how to maximize your reach on Medium. But now it's time to consider monetization. So if you have a story that gets, let's say, 1 million reads, how on earth are you going to get compensated? What are the monetization strategies on Medium? Well, in this part of the video, I will discuss everything about the monetization on Medium. So let's jump into it. So basically on Medium, there are two types of content. There's paid content and then there's free content. The free content is available to anybody on the internet at all times. And the paid content is available to anybody, but they only can read five stories per month for free. After that, they need to sign up and become a member in order to read further. Now to make your content paywalled, you need to be a partner on Medium. And back in the day, it used to be easy because all you needed to do is sign up and start writing and you were automatically a partner. But these days, Medium wants you to have at least 100 followers and at least one published post on your Medium blog. Now, once you join the partner program, there are two ways you can get compensated for your blog posts. First, the member reading time. So once you publish a blog post and put it behind the Medium membership paywall, if some member reads your story, 
Medium will calculate the time that the member spends on your story and compare it to the time that the member has spent on reading other stories and then based on that number they will give you a small percentage of that member's membership fee. So the more people read your stories, the more you earn. I have found that on my stories I earn about $13 per 1000 views and I have actually made a separate video about this topic. The other way you can earn on the Medium partnership program is by referring members to Medium. So basically if somebody reads your story and is convinced to join on Medium and they use your link to become a member on Medium, you will earn a portion of their monthly membership fee. And if I'm not mistaken, this is closer to 50%. So if somebody joins with your link and they pay $5 per month, you will get two and a half dollars as long as they stay on the platform every month. So if you, for example, get 100 paying customers to Medium, you will earn $200 every month as long as they stay on the platform. However, I have found out this to be much trickier and I have only been able to convert like 15 people or so. So this is not that lucrative way to earn on Medium. The better way is just to publish a ton of blog posts and get compensated for every view or read you get. But now the question probably is that how on earth do you actually pay all your content? Well, first of all, you need to get accepted into the Medium Partner Program, but let's assume that you are a partner right now and you want to make money with your story. So to do this, before you publish a blog post, check the box where it says meter this story behind a paywall or something like that. And that's what makes your blog post paid and you will actually earn money if somebody reads that post. Now, as I stated before, the other way to earn on Medium is by referring customers to the platform. So how on earth do you actually do that? Basically, to start referring, you need to share your link to Medium with somebody else. If you are already a Medium partner, you have this automatically generated page where you can find your unique affiliate link. Basically, this is the page where you want your customers or potential customers rather to land before becoming members on Medium. Once you have figured out the link, you can start promoting it on social media, to your friends, on your Medium posts or your profile as you want. However, notice that this strategy is not that effective, so that's probably something you should not spend time on. Now that you understand how the platform works and how to monetize the blog, it is probably a great idea to take a quick look at what you can actually expect to earn on Medium. So there's only a small percentage of people that earn $100 per month on Medium. So it is more than likely that you will end up earning way less than $100 per month unless you put in the work. I think I earned $50 on my first month on Medium, but then on the fourth month I almost did $2,000. So I worked really hard and some of my stories started to go viral which enabled me to earn on the platform. So basically there is no secret recipe on how to succeed on Medium. All you need to do is write a ton of content, take a look what's working right now and what kinds of posts are doing well on other authors, then publish your stories on relevant publications and remember to be patient and publish a ton of stories before expecting to make anything. At this point, you more or less know what it takes to become a successful Medium blogger. And as I mentioned, if you want to grow as a blogger, you need to know what's working and what's not. And this is why Medium gives you a great chance for viewing your individual stories performance, as well as a collective view of how all of your stories are performing. And to analyze the performance of your posts, just click on the top right icon where it has your profile picture and click on stats. This opens up the statistics page, which has a complete report of your individual blog's performance as well as the overall performance. And right off the bat, I must mention that it is really tempting to overanalyze the statistics of your blog posts but what I recommend doing is checking this one overall report from time to time. Just make sure that your Medium blog is growing. That's all you really need right now. There are cool strategies you can use to actually check if people have shared your stories on social media platforms or what kind of portion of your traffic originates from Google and other search engines. But I find it way, way, way too in-depth for this basic guide so we're going to skip that part for now. 
Now, last but not least, as I promised you earlier, I will talk more about that search engine traffic on Medium. So because medium.com is a really trusted and notable domain, your blog posts might start ranking high on search results on Google and other search engines. But before I dive deeper into this, it is important to realize that if you get a ton of traffic outside of Medium, that is from search engines, those won't really earn you anything because those are not paying customers. And to be brutally honest, if you want to target those search engine visitors, you should probably launch your own blog where you can actually monetize that traffic as well. But nonetheless, if you happen to be interested in search engine optimization, here's a quick primer on how you can do that on medium.com. So the broadest audience is the entire internet. And yes, on medium.com, you can actually reach out to all the people in the world that are using Google and other search engines. This is because Google tends to index those medium blog posts in the search results. However, this is where it gets interesting. On medium, people are surfing through their feeds and looking for content without knowing what kinds of posts they actually want to read. It is all about the title and the image. You might have a one minute story that does really, really well. But on search engines, it is an entirely different ballgame. So on search engines, people type in something because they are actually looking for particular information, such as how to lose weight. People know in advance what they are looking for, and the search engines know this as well. If you want to have a blog post rank high on search results, it needs to solve the problem in a better way than anyone else has ever done on the entire internet. And basically, this means that you need to pour in thoughts and information and knowledge like no other. The blog post needs to be super long and detailed in most cases. This is why you might find those 5000 or 10,000 word articles on the top of the search results on Google. And if you want to attract organic visitors from Google and other search engines to your Medium blog, this is exactly what you need to do. You need to solve a particular problem and do it in a really, really comprehensive and detailed fashion. And if you're interested in this stuff, I have actually made a separate video about how you can actually write blog posts that get tons of traffic on Google. But for now, I don't want to confuse you anymore. So this SEO phase or the search engine optimization phase is not really what you should focus on if you want to build a successful medium blog. But it's really important to understand that the search engine side is there too. So you might have a medium story that gets absolutely no visitors from medium and make, makes absolutely no money on medium, but it gets a ton of traffic from Google and other search engine and for example, could earn through affiliate marketing. And that's it for today's video. I hope that I was able to give you a great idea on how you can actually start a successful Medium blog this year. So basically, you can just sign up for free and start writing right off the bat. Remember to be patient and work super hard. There are no free lunches on the table, and no matter what kind of business you start, it will always require a ton of work. Now, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good day.